Welcome back to the studio, everyone. Today is part two of a two-part series called The Pink Cockatoo. And if you haven't watched part one, I will link it below so you can watch it. I have challenged myself to create an image of a pink cockatoo first in oil paint, which is part one of this series. And then I'm creating it now and showing you my process of using wool to recreate the same image. This process was an experiment from start to finish. The painting process can really inform the needle felting process because you need to mix colors, you need to work with shadow and light to create a 3D image on a 2D surface. I was really happy with how this both images came out and I learned a lot through this whole process so I hope you'll enjoy and you'll learn something through the watching of it and if you have any questions just let me know in the comments so we're starting out with the wet felting because I needed to create um, a background for this image so I started with a piece of uh, pre-felt wool in a cream color and I put my pinks and whites on top of it and wet felted that down to create a base for the whole image. If you're not familiar with the wet felting process what it is is you use water and friction to create basically a fabric. Here I'm using some pre-felt in a light gray and I'm laying down the gradient for the leaves. I decided to do this in the wet felting process also to help um, have a foundation for the leaves. This is similar to the painting process called un the underpainting and it gives you your base of light and shadow before you have the final color that you're adding on top of your painting. I found this very useful because you don't need as much wool when you start to needle felt and you already have your light and shadows figured out. So now we're on to the needle felting process which is my favorite and just like if you watch part one I used um, charcoal paper to trace the image onto my canvas this is a similar process where I'm using my welt felted pieces to cut out and um, make puzzle pieces out of the leaves so that I can adhere them to the background in the positions that I need them and then I can needle felt over top of them. I found this process to be a little tedious but very helpful and I wanted the image to look as close as it could to the painted image so this helped me achieve that result much easier than if I'd just recreated each leaf myself using freehand. So the rest of the video is going to be me needle felting the rest of the image and I'm just going to let you watch it and enjoy and I will join you at the end of the video to discuss the final image.
So right here is when I decided to redo his little eye and his nose because it just didn't have that little crook in it that I liked on the image. It really gives him his character. And I'm really happy I did because I think it came out really well. I also redid these leaves right here because they just weren't organic enough for me. I just kind of slapped them in there when I first put them in. So I went back and really looked at my image and tried to recreate what I had. And so here you have it, the pink cockatoo, wet felted and needle felted. I'm really pleased with how it came out and I actually kind of like the needle felted image more than the painted image. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know down in the comments what you think which image is your favorite? Which process that you liked the most or helped you? And as always, thanks for watching. Please share this with someone you think might enjoy it and give me a thumbs up. It means a lot. See you next time.